showing you this phenomenon in startup technology where your technology works amazing until two hours before you're about to demo it to a room of 200 <laughs> tech enthusiasts. <laughs> so, so that's been my day. But uh, AstroPrint is amazing. I'm gonna do a little bit more of our, our business pitch because we had a little uh, uh, tech issues right before we started off. But, uh, so I'm Drew Taylor. I'm the CEO of AstroPrint. AstroPrint makes, uh, AstroPrint creates a software that makes any 3D printer simple to use. So what Windows did for the early computer uh, industry is what AstroPrint does for 3D printers now. So there'll be over 150,000 desktop 3D printers sold this year alone. But over the next five years, that number is going to skyrocket to 5 million units being sold annually. So as we move out of this hobbyist market, and we move into more functional uses, such as rapid prototyping, small red manufacturing, and home use, the printer manufacturers that are going to win in the market are the ones with the best user experience. The problem is, the printer manufacturers are terrible at making simple-to-use software solutions. Current software for 3D printers are made by engineers for engineers and are far too complex for the general public. So AstroPrint makes the software these manufacturers can't. We bridge the gap between these highly technical machines and the non-technical people that are interacting with them. And in doing so, we own the 3D printing user experience. So here's the way that you use a desktop 3D printer now. First, you have to download three highly complex open source programs, one that repairs and tests your models, one that turns the models into printer instructions, and one that actually controls the printer itself. You run your model through all three of those, and then you make sure you get all 136 settings set the way you want them. Hit print and just hope you don't end up with a failed print like this. <laughs> then you gotta figure out which one of those settings or several settings you screwed up, right? And you get to start all over again, right? So uh, here's the new way of uh, using a 3D printer. With AstroPrint, you simply upload or report your design straight into uh, AstroPrint. You select three settings, hit print, and it works. And, unless you're on the current Wi-Fi network in here, <laughs> which we have to solve that problem. But otherwise, it works. So we reduce the process down from 136 settings to just three and uh, completely simplify the entire process. At the same time, AstroPrint makes any desktop 3D printer wireless color touch screen and cloud aware instantly. So current 3D printer owners are using that old clunky open source software out of pure necessity. The printer manufacturers we spoke to are desperately looking for more simple software solutions for their customers. They just can't find any. So our main competitive advantage, we really do make 3D printers so simple anybody can use them. And at the same time, we're completely printer neutral. AstroPrint works on nearly any desktop 3D printer in the same way that Windows printers to do. Is to retrofit their printers so they can install and use uh, AstroPrint software. So serving this retrofit market not only validates the need for AstroPrint, it gives us the momentum to integrate with the printing manufacturers and ride their adoption curve. As we ride their adoption curve, we own the 3D printing user experience, and we can monetize through a host of channels. Our top three are premium account upgrades, consumable sales, and an app marketplace not unlike the one in your phone. So our team has over 40 years combined experience in software development, embedded software, and interface design. In addition, we're already known as major problem solvers in the industry because we developed a site called 3dagogo.com, which is one of the most reputable design repositories in desktop 3D printing. Uh, all right, so uh, that's a little bit about AstroPrint. Uh, I don't know if there's any questions. Um, I saw the iPhone iPad there. Are you guys just running off iOS? Uh, uh, no, we're actually uh, running off of a browser. Uh, so it's browser-based, so you can use it off of any web-enabled device. As we move on, we will do native apps uh, in addition, but uh, that's where we are now. Um, from my experience, uh, one of the challenges of calibrating a 3D printer, it really depends on material use and kind of the, the printer itself. Um, how are you accommodating for that to make it so easy? Yeah. That's why I wish I had the demo running. Uh, so the three steps that come, the three settings that you have to set, are the printer, the material, and then the quality that you want. 
And when our system intelligently determines which settings you need, depending on the printer and filament. And, and uh, we're tied in, or we are uh, moving towards being tied in with databases where the manufacturers of these products themselves could change uh, what, what their recommended settings are. And because we're a cloud-based system, it's changed for every single person that uses their, their printer automatically. Uh, oh, so the question was, do we need a hardware piece to uh, uh, to let the printer interact? Uh, at the moment, yes. So uh, most 3D printers currently are not Wi-Fi enabled, and because we have a cloud component, uh, they do need to be Wi-Fi enabled. People could put our software on a Raspberry Pi or a similar Linux board if they want. What we ran on the Kickstarter is we're actually selling what we call an AstroBox, which is a pre-configured Linux board for people that just don't want to deal with it, they just, and it's plug and play. Uh, but you can do it for, for free, you know, buy your own board or, or buy it from us. So you get a competition? Uh, there's a little bit of competition out there. Um, there we did have a competitor uh, on Indiegogo at the exact same time as us that was also in an accelerator at the exact same time of us, as us. It's a very, very interesting dynamic. Uh, so they're, uh, they're coming along, so maybe if we end up as the Microsoft and Apple of the industry, uh, I might be all right with that. Right? Um, uh, of course, uh, MakerBot, it makes their own system very similar to what we're making. Of course, they only make it for the MakerBot. So you can see them as a competitor, but the way we look at it is all the printer manufacturers that are wanting to compete with MakerBot, they want to compete on the software level as well. But they can't. They can't develop the software that competes with MakerWare. So then we become the software partner for all of these other people that are trying to compete. Not unlike uh, Android for smartphones, right? So there's so what we see is actually helping competition in, in the industry. I know that's not exactly your question. Join New England's largest technology meetup, sponsor an event, present, or attend. Visit www.bostonnewtech.org.